consistently we see people who have the highest omega-3 levels live the longest. And a good example of that is like Japan. When the Japanese, just because of their diet, have a, a omega-3 index that's about eight or 9% on average. So it's like twice as high as the West. And they live on average four or four and a half years longer than we in, in the US live. Um, despite the fact they smoke more, despite the fact they have more high, high blood pressure than we do, despite the fact they have more stress than we do, they live longer. And I, I hate to attribute all of that to an omega-3 effect, and I can't, but I can say that's one brick in the wall. And when we look at risk for death from heart disease, it's the same story. Higher omega-3, lower risk for death from heart disease, lower risk for death from cancer, lower risk for death from all other causes combined with high omega-3. So it's doing something across not just heart health. It's helping us stay alive and resilient longer. And if you choose to take supplements, is there evidence that if you take supplements that that will improve my heart health? Yeah, they're right. That's, again, back to the UK Biobank. There have been several studies that just looked at fish oil supplement use. Yes, no. It's a very crude measure because we, we don't know how much they're taking, how frequently they're taking, you know, what product they're taking, any of that stuff. It's just a yes, no. Uh, but the people who are taking omega-3 supplements in that UK biobank are lower risk for multiple kinds of heart outcomes. We've looked at stroke and we looked at blood levels of omega-3, which is much better than asking people if they take fish oil. Just look at their blood levels. And we find that the higher the blood level, the lower the risk for stroke, which contradicts that whole atrial fibrillation concern because the, the problem with AFib is increased risk of stroke. Well, we use, even in the studies, the big studies with the pharmaceutical products, where they reported this, uh, you know, one or two percent increase in risk for AFib, they had like 20 percent reduced risk for stroke. So the omega-3s are still benefiting heart health in, in a wide variety of ways, even in these people with, uh, again, with high, high risk for heart disease who are taking high, high dose uh, pharmaceutical products. Um, they're still getting a lot of good heart benefit, even if there is a small increased risk for AFib. So I think, Jonathan, the evidence is really clear that omega-3s beneficially impact heart health. I think it's really important to say as well for any skeptics out there, one fantastic thing about omega-3 is because we can't make it, it means that any increase in the blood we know is coming from what you're eating um, because people often say, oh, well, how do you know it's because of it's what they're eating? So this is one fact that we can say, actually, what's in the blood is coming from the food you're eating. And so I think where there's some really exciting new research, though, is around brain health. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something, certainly when I was teaching, you know, even up until a few years ago, a lot of what I was saying was, oh, we just don't know yet. And I know this is something you've focused on more recently in your research. So it'd be great to understand a little bit about what the latest evidence says around omega-3 and brain health. Sure. Um, and I'm sure when you do your lectures, you start with babies in, in the womb and the formation of the brain in mm -hmm. the first place, um, and which is very important because the, the brain uh, has a lot of one of the two omega-3s called DHA is part of the structure of the brain. Uh, and it's it, it, that it, that's important from the very beginning in your eyes too. Right? The, the, actually, the eye is an extension of the brain, and the level of omega three in the retina, the back of the eye, is, is one of the highest in the whole body. So there's a real. It's there for a reason. It's always there for a reason. The, the omega three story in dementia has been growing over time. We know that uh, when they do autopsies on people who died of dementia, compared to controls who died of something else. The, those who had dementia have lower omega-3 levels in the brain, okay? That's one piece of the story. Um, we've seen that higher levels of omega-3 in the blood, higher omega-3 index, predicts a lower risk for developing Alzheimer's disease or all-cause dementia um, over time. So that's another important piece of it. If your B vitamin nutrition is good, then the omega-3s seem to increase, help increase cognition, improve, improve brain health reduce risk for developing dementia. If your B vitamin levels are too low, actually I'm talking about homocysteine, which is a, a particular molecule in the blood that responds to, that's kind of a barometer of how well uh, your B vitamins uh, are working. If that homocysteine level is high, 
the omega-3 effect goes away. So there's a, what we call an interaction here between those two nutrients. And so it's important to get good B vitamin nutrition, good omega-3 nutrition for brain health. But it's been difficult to show in the kind of randomized trial that we're all used to, you know, give somebody some omega-3 for three or four years and then another group not, and then see who develops dementia. We haven't got time. Or either that or you pick people who are already so far down the road, you can't do anything about it. Uh, so it, at this point, the omega-3 and brain health connection is mostly, I think, based on these observational data, what we call epidemiology, more so than randomized trials, because haven't got that much randomized trial data yet. And what about in relation to mental health more generally? Yeah, mental health is right. We just got a paper accepted a couple of days ago on anxiety and depression as a function of omega-3 levels. And again, higher omega-3 levels are always linked with less current depression and anxiety and less risk for developing it over time. And Bill, I think a lot of people listening will be really surprised the shift from like heart health and dementia to like anxiety and depression, because most of us were brought up with this idea that like, you know, our mind and our bodies are separate and like the first like, it's like really physical, but anxiety and depression, like how could that be affected by how much salmon I ate? Do you understand at all what's going on there? No. <laughs> I love short, the short answer. Uh, I, I can't tell you what's going on. I mean, some of the cells in the brain are, are uh, kind of there to pr reduce inflammation. A certain small part, not, not the big chunks of it, but there are certain cells that are, their, their job is to control inflammation. And the omega-3s can get into those cells and help reduce inflammatory signaling in the brain. And that's good. Uh, but at this point, we're just seeing associations between a high omega-3. That doesn't, you know, strictly speaking, and Sarah understands this very well, because you have an association doesn't mean you have a cause. Yeah, so this is what I'm fascinated by now listening to. Have there been any supplement trials where they give people omega-3 supplements and see whether it reduces levels of depression, levels of anxiety, improves mood, happiness, yeah, those kind yeah, of things? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, should people who are not feeling happy, should people who are suffering from depression, in addition to whatever therapy they have, also be taking omega-3? I think yes, the answer to that. Um, there have been studies, particularly in depression, for many years. And what they've discovered uh, was somewhat surprising. At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.